Hi. <clears throat> so uh, today we uh, meet the world, the Wheel of Fortune, and it has nothing to do with the game. Or Vanna White, I think, was her name. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, on one level, it's a very simple card. It shows the um, spinning of the wheel that uh, uh, represents the ups and downs of life that we have no control over and that come to all of us each in its time. And uh, I'll show you the cards in just a minute. But of course, uh, we're not just dealing with that level. On a deeper level, and even, even, just, even on that level too, it has to do the progression from the past few cards to this card is significant because the past couple of cards have prepared us for this. First, if you could start from strength, we learned how to look within, how to not run away from what we're afraid of, but to turn around and face it with interest and acceptance and ultimately compassion. And uh, then we took that inward. We saw how that all sprang from ourself and our mind, how we make judgments. Uh, we tried to learn practices or approaches that helped us uh, stay centered and balanced or stay or find or refine that place of centeredness and balance. And we worked with it alone or with a wise teacher. Or, and it was a day to somewhat be in the hermitage, to be on our own and uh, work with these practices. Generally speaking, it can be easy to find peace within when you're in a secluded spot. Uh, but it becomes a lot more difficult once you're thrown back out into the world where good and bad things happen on big and small levels all the time, <laughs> all the time. Whether it's getting caught in traffic or um, losing your job or losing your partner or losing something of great importance and value to you. Uh, here are some of the images. This is mine. And remember, since I'm holding it up to the, cam the camera, it's backwards. So the white at the top actually um, is, it comes from the other side coming up to the top and at the very top. And the black at the nadir comes from the uh, side approaching the bottom and reaching the nadir because usually the time that you feel yourself approaching the top feels really great, and the time that you feel yourself approaching and at the bottom feels really bad. All right, here's my other version, which has a crown at the top. and uh, It's on a boat to show its instability, I believe, and two people dancing. Um, I like the old versions because they really show, besides the fact that it has a blind naked woman spinning that wheel, uh, showing the capriciousness of it, and the two people happy at the top and the one man falling off. Um, the Rider Waite and the Crowley deck are both similar in that they show a lot of arcane symbolism and they both show uh, a sphinx, a symbol of wisdom and strength and intelligence at the top and a devil-like creature at the bottom. So, uh, so you get the basic idea. We all want to occupy the top where things are good. And uh, when we are at the top, most of the time, we don't think we're there long enough or that it's quite as good as it's supposed to be. We still want more. We might have the uh, great husband or a great partner and a great job and you know uh, enough money and, and a good home. But we still somehow think it should be more. We should have a better job or a bigger house or you know also another car or something like that. That's our tendency when we're at the top. We kind of think it's going to stay there. And at the bottom, we also kind of think it's going to stay there. But uh, we um, tend to think it's, uh, it's much, much worse than it should be. And uh, that uh, we deserve more of what we had on top. That's the nature of things. And this top and bottom occurs both in terms of the events of the world, which is what it symbolizes us being thrown back into in the big way of prosperity versus poverty, and in small ways, or uh, also, you know, feeling happy and calm walking down the street or cursing in traffic. But also it happens internally with emotions that can come from outside events or can be about, uh, they can just arise naturally. The feeling of always wanted more, wanting more versus the feeling of being content, the feeling of anger or jealousy or greed or um, boredom uh, or nervousness, anxiety versus um, 
all of the positive counterparts feeling, again, contented or happy or acceptance or um, uh, calmness, uh, love, all of these, the feelings that arise as well are represented on the Wheel of Fortune. So the techniques we learned are very important, both turning around and facing our fears and using those techniques we learned at the Hermit to reconnect to the inter, that inner space and to try to hold it. And what that means with the Wheel of Fortune is um, the hub. In this model of the wheel, the hub is um, said to be motionless. All those events keep spinning around the hub. But if you can find and hold that centered place, um, you will not uh, you will still have the events to deal with. No spiritual practices promises you endless security in, the, in this world of light and dark. You don't get out of that, and you don't get out of the work that you have to do for, that's, that's necessitated by any place that you're at. But it's your consciousness that finds the center place. And from that place, you can be accepting, and you can take interest in what's happening in your life and not take it quite so personally and enjoy as much as can be enjoyed the play the play of up and down the play of life that all of this is life just as much as any other part of it not just the good parts and from that wheel the center of the wheel you are in that balanced place uh, it's not always an easy place to hold and uh, the techniques that you learned and used may help you some they may help you hold it for a second, hold it for half a second, uh, kind of get close to it, uh, kind of get close to it for a minute. They may even just help you be aware that there is a center. No matter what, even that little tiny bit of awareness, that counts and that helps. Uh, I find the words and, and the practice actually of the fire ceremony, which is part of the Hindu tradition, very helpful. You do it in the morning and the evening, and although there's a whole big routine that goes with it, you could just do it with a candle, but to the fire, to the uh, sun, and to the progenitor, whoever or whatever you think that progenitor is, you say, in its turn, idam namama, this isn't mine. So you're giving away the results, of course, of your effort that you intend to put into things, but you're also trying to give away all those feelings, all those intense feelings that come up. I want this so badly. You know, I need this. I'm, I'm going to work really hard towards this. Or I, I feel so angry or upset about that. And this has to happen. You just like, you'll do your best. You'll do what you can, what you have to do. But you understand that larger forces than you are ultimately in control. And you say, this isn't mine. This is yours. Uh, good luck with whatever techniques or whatever uh, that, that you find to use or whatever success you have dealing with the uh, ups and downs, whether they be small or big. Sometimes just even being aware that you can name this up or down is helpful and helps you understand that whatever it is, it's going to change. It will always change. Good luck with that. And uh, I'll see you very soon with the middle card of our journey, Justice.